sit still right there in that studio for a moment because we've got Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump on the phone with us right now. Mr. Trump, good morning. Your reaction to what happened this morning early well, in Belgium. I think it's absolutely horrible. You're talking to a great man uh, in Walid. He knows this uh, stuff better than just about anybody I can think of. And uh, you have the right man. And I, I will tell you, I've been talking about this for a long time. And look at Brussels. Brussels was a beautiful city, a beautiful place with zero crime. And now it's a disaster city. It's a total disaster. Mr. Trump, and Sorry, and we have to be very we have to be very careful in the United States. We have to be very, very vigilant as to who we allow into this country. If you do become president and we're in a situation like this, what would you do to protect America? Well, again, I think I've said it. I would I would close up our borders to people until we figure out what is going on. Look what look at Brussels, look at Paris, look at so many cities that were great cities. Paris is, is almost almost as bad. Uh, if you look at, you know, Paris is no longer the beautiful city of lights. Paris has got a lot of problems in it. And all you have to do is speak to the people that live there. And you look at other places where the same thing has happened, and they're in fear. Their city's in fear. And we have to be smart in the United States. And when people come in, I mean, we're taking in, uh, we're taking in people without real documentation. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know what they're, what, you know, we don't know where they're from, who they are. You look at them and look at it from any standpoint. They could be ISIS. They could be ISIS-related. And, uh, you know, you, we just don't learn. We don't learn. I mean, Brussels is an amazing example. Brussels was an absolutely crime-free city, a one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And now you look right. at it, it's a disaster. But uh, we're talking with Donald Trump, obviously. Uh, uh, Donald, as you know, you, we just talked to Waleed Farris. We talked to Dr. Zudi Jasser yesterday, Ambassador Khalizad, uh Done great things for this country. What do all three have in common? They're Muslims. The yes, key to no, unwinding the Muslim extremist issue is getting the Muslim community to trust us. How to trust us and the government more than they uh, do maybe people in their own community. How do you do that? Well, you need to have, I mean, you have to be very vigilant as to who you have and where they're coming from. And, you know, you have to look at, at people and look at their background so closely. But this is a story that just seems to be more and more happening. And you're going to see things happening in Paris. You see what's happening in London and other cities, and it's really not very pretty to watch. And, you know, if you take a look at the migration and you go up to Germany, I have people and friends that live in Germany. They say what's going on up there. They've never seen anything like it in their lives. I mean, this woman allowed millions of people in, and, and uh, the assimilation is very, very difficult and in some cases impossible. Sure, and in many cases, and I know you have seen the reports, uh, Mr. Trump, where as ISIS has rolled over different communities and cities and towns in Syria, you know, they, they knock over the courthouse, they take the passport machine, and they take the passport documents, and they just print up fake passports for right. the people who need them or right. people who've got the money and they're coming into our country and they are coming into our country too and and uh, we don't we have no idea what's happening our government has absolutely no idea what's happening but they're coming into our country they're coming in by the thousands and just watch what happens. I'm a pretty yeah. good prognosticator. Just watch what happens over mm -hmm. the years. It yeah. won't be pretty. You know, it was uh, a few days ago. It was actually about a month ago when the New York Times uh, called you a racist because you said Brussels is uh, uh, and Belgium's turning into a hellhole, if I could paraphrase. What do, you, what do you say about them then and what do you say now? Well, the New York Times has no clue as to what's going on in the real world. They have no clue. It's a failing newspaper. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, it'll be closed unless somebody buys it as a trophy and uh, loses a fortune. You know, the whole thing is ridiculous. That We listen to people like this. That uh, We listen to people. They blew a newspaper right out of the woods. They went into other businesses, lost billions of dollars, and then we're supposed to sit back and listen to the New York Times. The fact is that uh, we have a situation worldwide, a situation that is out of control, and just all I do, I'm looking at your pictures now on the show. It's it's disgraceful, right. and uh, that's well, what it is. Yeah, I've been, I, I I've don't been think saying I did. it for a long time. Donald, uh, I, uh, Donald Trump, I don't think I did a good job uh, describing that to you. What I was saying is, what do, you, what do you think of the New York Times? They took you to task about your assessment of Brussels. Were you right? Oh, of course I'm right. I mean, just turn on the television and obviously look at Fox and Friends, you know. 
Of course. I mean, you take a look at it. Brussels is a disaster. And it's been a disaster. Brussels is an armed camp, and I'm not talking about today. You go down into Brussels now, it's an armed camp. If you went into Brussels, tw Brussels 20 years ago, it was like a magical city. Right. It was a magical city. And, and now you look at it, it's an armed camp. I'm just looking at your pictures on television right now. It's horrible. What and, about and in particular, for, for instance, in the neighborhood where they picked up this Salim Abdul Salam, mm -hmm. the, one of the guys from uh, the Paris attacks, uh, in that particular, in the Muslim community, uh, police have no penetration in that neighborhood and no real, a lot of people don't have a real connection to the police and there's high unemployment, so that explains a lot about that. I well, the ask police you are afraid to go into the neighborhood and he was being protected by other people in mm -hmm. the neighborhood. So here's one of the Paris leaders and killers and he's being protected mm -hmm. by people in the city itself. It's ridiculous. He was four doors down from his parents. Right. The whole thing is crazy. And and it's not going to change. It's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. I want to ask you, too, because you're a businessman, about the markets, because I know the markets are down. Brussels is a hotbed for international business. What happens now going forward from a, a business perspective? Well, I think this this whole thing will get worse uh, as time goes by. It's being, you know, perpetrated all over the place now. Brussels is in very bad shape, but many cities will be this way, and, you know, with what's taking place. And it's really the policies of people that don't know what they're doing. It's it's people that don't know what they they see what's happening, and yet they allow it to continue yeah. to happen. Uh, Mr. Trump, let me ask you about this. Uh, as we look at these images, we know that once you get through the security zone at the airports, uh, you know that the security is high. However, these explosions at the airport apparently took place outside the security perimeter. The explosions, the three explosions at the two metro stops in downtown Brussels happened at a metro stop where there is no security. These are soft targets mm -hmm. for folks in the United States of America looking in thinking, well, you know what? I, I take a metro. I take a subway. Right. Are those safe? What should we be doing to increase security there if we need to do anything? Well, you, you really, look, number one, you want to lead your life. You don't want to be living in an armed camp for your whole life. And there is a certain group of people that are, is making living a, a normal life impossible. And you just have to take a look at other cities. I mean, you go into Paris, there are places in Paris where the police are afraid to go. They don't want to go. It's so bad. You look at Brussels where this guy was being mm, hit yeah. by his friends, mm -hmm. okay? His friends are holding him out. He's the most wanted man in the world. He's living right under their their noses. Uh, the police don't want to go into those areas. They have absolutely no control over those areas. And I mean, we as a country have to learn what's going on. And frankly, those countries better get smart fast because they're just disintegrating. And, you know, Brussels, I have friends that live in Brussels. They say the place is literally disintegrating. And I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about generally yeah, speaking. Right. I, I tell you what, uh, here's a tweet just in from the Department of State for the United States federal government. Message to U.S. citizens in Brussels, shelter in place, yep. avoid public transportation as well. Right, that's what they said earlier. Uh, Donald Trump, a lot of people listening right now are, might be misinterpreting uh, your message in the past and currently that the problem, uh, the, that you have a problem with Muslims. You don't have a problem with Muslims. In fact, you just hired one, Waleed Ferris, to work that's for true. you. So that's how do you true. want to win over the trust of the Muslim community that want to be Americans or good citizens and, and get them to oust the, uh, the terrorist amongst them? How does Donald Trump do that? Well, that's one of the things. They're very untrusting of people other than Muslims, and they have people there that they know. For instance, the bombers, the people that killed in, uh, if, you, if you take a look back six months ago, the two people, they got married, the radicalized, you know, he was <laughs> radicalized. Uh, everybody knew what was going on. They had bombs all over their apartments. They had guns all over the place. Everybody knew what was going on, and nobody reported them. If they would have been reported, somehow that community doesn't believe in reporting. They know exactly what's going on. And they don't know, but they don't believe in reporting to the police. So what's your now, message, you, what's your and, message and way, to them, D Donald Trump? I, my message, to, it's not to them. My message to us is we better get smart and we better get smart fast. My message to them is they have to be, they have to be more open with the police. They have to, they have to, they have to become part of the community. They have to let people know when they see people making bombs in the first floor of an apartment. Uh, they have to they have to let people know, and they don't do it. 
and then the bombs go off and the guns go off and everything happens and you have a situation like you recently had in California where 14 people are killed, or you have Paris attacks and it's yeah. going to get worse and worse. In my opinion, this is just the beginning. It will get worse and worse because we are lax and we are foolish. We are foolish. We can't allow these people at this point. We cannot allow these people to come into well, the how country. Do you, how sorry. do you penetrate communities like that? How do you make a difference and make change? Well, it's not for us to penetrate. It's for them to penetrate. They have to come to us. You know, we're not the victims here. We're acting like we're the, like it's our fault, because that's the problem with the liberal policies of this country and this world. Uh, it's acting like it's our fault. It's not our fault, okay? It's not our fault. It's their fault. And they have to come out and they have to say, hey, look, this is happening. This can get cleared up, but I don't know. The, the, the thinking is not... It's just looking to me like this is going to get worse and worse, and it'll happen in other locations. It's already happened big league in Paris, and will continue to happen in Paris. Look, in Paris, they have places that you cannot, the police cannot even go to. They're petrified to go to them. They have absolutely no control. They're different zones. They have absolutely no control of the areas. And right. you just can't have that. Don't, well, okay, I, do want, I do want to clarify one thing. Waleed Ferris is not Muslim. He's Christian, so I had that wrong. Okay. I apologize. But he is an expert in that area. Okay, so Donald Trump, uh, let's, say, let's say you're president of the United States today. Obviously, you would have cracked down on immigration uh, to prevent what you were talking about earlier. What else would you do today? Well, I would... You know, I guess I would just talk to the people and give them, frankly, a pep talk. You know, we need a pep talk. We need spirit in our country, okay? We are allowing thousands and thousands of people to come into our country, and we don't even know where they come from and who they are. They're coming in from Syria. They're coming in from different parts. They're fix coming that, in from the migration. Excuse me? You say you're going to fix that. Well, I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to allow them to come in. I, that's going to be fixing it, okay? Right. I'm not allowing them to come in. I mean, we don't know what's going on. There's something going on. There's something different. They're not assimilating into society, and there's something different. And we have to be very, very careful, and we have to be very vigilant. And this is what I've been saying for a long time. And I guess it's at least a small part of the reason why I'm the number one front runner. Right. I mean, people, people are very... But, concerned about but, this, and they're very concerned about the security of this country, of Donald, our country. Right, and obviously, if people are coming in from Syria, there's a lot of them who just uh, are victims, and there's some of them that want to be pretend they're victims and they're terrorists. But what about the other people that are uh, want to be Americans and want to be Muslims? You have to be very vigilant. They have to be checked so carefully. It's a very hard thing to do. If they're coming from Syria, it's likely they have no documentation, they have no paper, they have no anything. But if they're coming from certain other places, and if they're Muslim, they have to be checked very, very carefully. They're having a very hard time assimilating no matter where they go. They're not assimilating easily into other countries. We have to be very careful. We're not babies. We can't do this anymore. We can't have these attacks anymore. We can't have World Trade Centers anymore and, and going planes flying into the Pentagon. It's time to be smart. It's time to look carefully. And we have to be, look, people will come in, but we have to be very, very careful as to who comes into our country or we're going to have problems like you've never seen. We probably already will have, but we're going to have problems like you've never seen before. Donald right. Trump, thank you so much for being with okay. us this morning. Thank you very much. And, of course, big votes today. Uh, on a lesser note, it's not life and death, but in Arizona and Utah uh, on the Republican side. All right. Uh, meanwhile, let's go back to Donald Trump's uh, new foreign policy advisor, one of them, Waleed Ferris, who was in Brussels just about 10